Roger and Mike Fisher talk about their reunion with Hart at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and how it was a little intense. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. So when you consider, and we've said this in previous videos, and a lot of you know this already, Mike Fisher was dating Ann Wilson way back in the day, and Roger was with Nancy. And they left in 79 when, when the couples broke up. And you got to wonder, well, do you want to do stuff with your ex-wife? So you knew it was going to be a little tense at least when Roger Fisher joined them up on stage. We talk about that and all the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stuff. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I was just talking to a little while ago, Jonathan Kane. And I said, well, Steve Perry was there. How does it feel? I mean, everyone wants a reunion, but you know, as much as I get along with my ex-wife, if you want to know how she is, you ask her, how did it feel being on, uh, being there with Ann and Nancy and their new band? I mean, did, were you like a good sport about it? It is what it is. We're former members. How, how, how was it being up there? For me, it was really tense. Because I don't think I was held in real high esteem by them. And I don't think that they knew what they were going to get when we got back together. So they had Jerry Cantrell there in the rehearsal room. And I, I wondered, well, why is he here? Why is he playing with us? And I think it was a safety net in case Raj was too weird to deal with or, or something. But whatever image they had in their mind, it wasn't accurate because I was fine. And once we broke the ice, I mean, me and Jerry Cantrell started singing Alice in Chains songs. I took the Lane Staley parts. And, and so we had a great little warm-up session before the girls came into the room. And when they came into the room, Nancy, or Jan, Anne came first and I went right up to her and I had a little intimate conversation with her that let her know of some important, important things that were very personal. And that was really good. We had a really nice little healing moment. Then when Nancy came in, I did the same thing and established a, a foundation of uh, kind of trust and like, you know, everything, everything's cool between us. And, and after that, it felt a lot better. But still, uh, I, I was really under the microscope. So it, was, uh, it wasn't comfortable for me. What was comfortable was the minute that we started playing music, it was like, oh, my God, there it is, you know, instant. We, the very first time we did Crazy on You after all, all those decades, it was just instantly really, really good. Mm -hmm. Like nothing had changed, you know. So from that point on, it, it felt really good. And then, so then when we did the actual induction ceremony, imagine you're on stage. There's, you know, going to be millions and millions of people in the television audience. But right down in front of you, you've got Jack Nicholson, Quincy Jones, uh, Oprah, and Rush and oh my God, all these amazing people, and that's your audience, along with the other seven thousand people. That you know that uh, that was a pressure that I wasn't used to at all. Uh, but that's what helps charge a performance with energy is when you've got that kind of pressure. Mike, were you at the Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame? Yes, uh, and you obviously had a chance to. You had a chance to talk to. Uh... To Anne? No. No? Okay. No. Okay. It, it, it was kind of strange, actually. Um, I wasn't... There was no inclusion or recognition. I was more or less invisible to her. Uh, and it was very odd to me that it would be that way. It was incredible. I mean, <clears throat> I have apologized to Mike many times for not bringing up his name during the induction process. It was just, I mean, I was nervous as hell, but yeah. that's no excuse for not bringing up the, there was no single person more responsible for the success of that group than Mike, and nobody mentioned him. And it's, it's just, that's, uh, it's just very regretful to me.
You know, we live in a world where either your spouses are the devils or your spouses are someone who helped form your foundation. My ex-wife's one of my best friends. My current wife upstairs loves my ex-wife, but I know that's not always the case. And Roger, when you were talking about looking, you know, looking at Nancy, and I mean, it's not a perfect world. I'm not blame blame because I wasn't part of that. I mean, this is your world. But it, it, in, a, in a perfect world, though, it'd be nice to say, hey, we spent time together you know, nice to see you again, you know, because we all shape each other, man. We all do that. That's, it's cliche, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Another thing about if we did have the chance to do a reunion, boy, it sure would be nice to get some things talked about. That yes. Are real, yes, that are real touchy and, and that this old, uh, it's old, stuff that's in I know it's in their makeup and it's in my makeup and when you get things talked about a polarization in your being can occur where there's a big sense of relief there's knowledge that oh that's why that was like that and that's why that was like that and that's why I acted the way I did and, and that's why I had that blow up moment in Portland where it's smashed my guitar on the stage and went back in the dressing room and threw my guitar against the wall because I didn't have the tools to be able to speak what I wanted to say, which needed to be said because of what I saw was going on. This is the true thing that was going on. And I couldn't say, I couldn't talk about it. It was, it was not an environment that supported that kind of conversation or those kinds of processes at that time. Yeah. And so in frustration, I threw my guitar against the wall. So then Anne grabbed onto that, saying that I threw the guitar at Nancy. It's just bullshit. But uh, yeah, if we could get some stuff talked about, we would recognize that my greatness and their greatness are equal, and there should be, there should really be no problem here. Yeah. Uh, you know, as Nancy's older sister, uh, I can certainly understand where she was coming from. But uh, <laughs> without going into that, uh, there could be some great uh, healing, forgiveness, understanding. And that would be awesome if that happened. You can't always make amends. You know what? I've said this on videos before that... I'm Facebook friends with almost every girlfriend that was important to me. We're friends on Facebook, but that's rare. And making amends, as Roger was talking about in this clip, is something that you, you might want to do, but we don't know what type of water went under what type of bridge when it comes to couples. But he says his piece and that's it. We've asked Ann Wilson a little while ago for an interview, but they didn't get back to us. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Buy a t-shirt. It helps support our channel. It helps us pay our editors to get more of these videos out to you. Links in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.